A healer doesn't walk away from the pain. A healer walks towards it. Every now and then, it becomes the sacred duty of the healer to take on that very pain which has entrenched so many into an oblivion of despair and hopelessness. For that's what hell is. A place without light. And it is in this total darkness where there seems to never be any hope. No beacon of trust. No way out. Far too many are fooled by the artificial lights presented to them as the truth. And the trust that has been put into the artificial has been a terrible misguidance, which brings forth many unforeseeable consequences. This realm and its ruler doesn't care one whit about any projected desires of what any individual believes this reality to be all about. When the rancher comes to collect their cattle, that rancher isn't concerned in the slightest about how the cows feel about their inevitable fate. There is not one drop of empathy in regard to the fear and terror within these helpless animals, completely and utterly confused about why their master that has protected them for so long is now leading them to the slaughterhouse. That's the cold reality. The one that lords over us all is just as ruthless and completely indifferent towards everyone, despite any false presentation to the contrary. Does one have the courage to face the truth like a warrior, no matter how harsh it is? For the truth is neutral. It has no bias or agenda. For if it had a bias, it would not be the truth. For then it would be divided, and a divided truth is no truth at all. It is then no better than a lie. Almost all prefer the reassurances of comforting lies as opposed to confronting the harsh facts of terrible truths, for the immensity of the truth becomes nearly too much to bear. It is because of fear that one would rather be told a fairy tale that eases their immediate concerns yet leads them astray, as opposed to coming to grips with the total weight of the truth that is anything but pleasant. Selling comforting lies is far more popular though, which is why the very few throughout the ages who have done the impossible and brought forth the full weight of the message and created the opportunity of the narrow gate have a different cross to bear. For it is also true that for any who are to walk on the path of the world between worlds must take up their own cross and carry their own dead weight on a journey of impossible odds. The fact of the matter is that there is no golden chariot that is going to pick one up at their doorstep and bring them comfortably through the supernal gates. There are no galactic races that are coming from on high to caravan us into higher dimensions. Total freedom and the way out is not as simple as wishing fervently for it to occur, or believing in it with one's whole being. And if salvation was already accomplished, there would be no one continuously seeking it. This is, quite unfortunately, not the reality. Only the most blind do not see how incredibly wrong everything is in this realm. When one is in the game, it can be easy to get caught up in all of its spectacles and drama. When one is out of the game, there is a very dark, harsh, and cold reality to be dealt with. The one side is never able to see the other side. One eye always remains closed. There is no guaranteed salvation through sheer belief in an idea, but there is something that is called hope, and it is this hope that creates an impossible opportunity, an opportunity that is fraught with difficulty, in which there are no guarantees and by rights should be completely impossible. This is why it was said that one must believe that the impossible is possible. One must believe because there is no other choice. But it is not just hope that one can hold on to that makes freedom possible. Every individual that would be free of this realm must take hold of this opportunity and put the entirety of their efforts into actually walking the pathway that has been made possible. The magnitude of effort that has brought forth this opportunity is incalculable. The amount of casualties that have helped bring forth this chance, enormous. To get to heaven, one must go through hell. 
and any who are truly ready to be free must be ready to save themselves and put everything on the line. Walking through hell doesn't simultaneously mean staying in the comforts of one's dwelling. What is not obvious at this moment is going to become blatantly obvious to everyone in the not-too-distant future. This is not a metaphor. Thus, it has been declared. It is this heart's true coronation. The sun is coming out of the chambers of death to rise from the ashes, to overcome the impossible and bring forth the path that leads to life everlasting. For what has been seeded into death shall return to death, but what has been seeded into the eternal shall live forever. This entire realm is a death ride, and there is an enormous hidden ticket price to be paid when one is on it. It has been correct to call this the price of sin. Death has reduced God's Son to ashes, to wear an ashtray that perpetually turns into a pile of dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Every heart has been reduced to this. Wearing the devil's suit which constantly accumulates a lot of debt. Death. It becomes a very steep price to pay. Everyone who would walk this narrow opportunity must indeed pay a very high price. And the one who creates the door must pay a much higher price than those who are brought through it. To pay through a world of pain. To settle the bill. This is why at this point on the true coronation, this heart has been on his cakewalk appropriately enough. It is a cakewalk because everything is still quite easy at this moment. But, in less than two years, this heart will be embarking on the actual desert walk, from cakewalk to just deserts. Kicked out into the cold entirely, to walk a journey that will last several years, the commencement of which is to face the father of lies himself, and thus inevitably have it cross out the fiction. The fiction and lie of its own abhorrent and erroneous design of death. When the unexpected happens, it doesn't matter how prepared or unprepared we are for its circumstances. It doesn't matter if we are ready for it all to happen, for that is what inevitability is all about. That is what death is all about. It is the end of the road, so to speak, and whether anyone wants to face up to it, the fact is that the party is over. A denial in the inevitable doesn't do a single thing to change the circumstances. It occurs regardless of one's petty desires or wishes to the contrary. A world without its true sun is a world without heart. And when there is no heart, it inevitably consumes the entire earth until there is nothing left. Without the heart, and thus the earth, one is consequently rendered homeless. This is the foundation of the message that is being brought forward. Doubt it not. This is a message that is going to be heard by the entire world. The first part of this walk must by necessity be done entirely alone. It is to be a test of resilience, fortitude, and faith. A statement will then be made by the encouragement of the Spirit, one which will show the whole world all about impossibilities. It will then be up to everyone which path they are going to choose to walk on. Which crown one truly believes in. <laughs>